What we've seen this year, really for the first time, is um, serious criticism of major taxpayers on the grounds that they are only paying what is legally due. And that there is some morally correct amount of tax which is much higher than the legally correct amount of tax. As a lawyer, I find that a very difficult concept to accept. If at the end of the day it will be a man on the street uh, deciding my tax bill, that will be a concern to me because then I don't know how I should forecast my tax payment. The global tax system is uh, stems from another era. From an era where you have got goods flowing through the world from factories and permanent establishments. We have seen an increased tax complexity when going cross-border. You can see from the, the G8, the G20, the finance ministers themselves are saying there is a problem with the existing tax rules. We need to fix it. Who is at fault? Is it the companies or the countries? We don't have a global government. We don't, so we, we can't ask a global government to do this. The closest thing we have in this particular sphere is the, is the OECD. The OECD cannot solve by itself the international tax problem. The introduction of automatic exchange of information as the um, internationally agreed standard may be the more significant turning point and it's part of a whole series of moves towards transparency. Tax transparency means different things to different people. You don't need to be ashamed of, um, of what you do, you really need to be very, uh, very sincere in explaining your, uh, the, the things that you need to do. I think the way tax authorities are behaving, they in turn are aware of their stakeholders, their external perception, and therefore that's having an impact on how they uh, behave with us. We have seen cases where the tax authorities is telling us we need to see an adjustment of X million euro, and we said why, what is the technical reasons for that, what is the substance, and the answer was this is just part of being in a tax audit, we have to go to, into, into a compromise. And when we do compromises, we don't do the technical analysis. And that, to me, is very scary. I think the debate in the press about digital economy has, has been simplified. On digital business, if we're talking on direct taxation, it's a very hard issue to solve, I would say. We don't know what to do about it yet. I don't, I don't think anybody would know how to, to tax Google. I think one of the reasons that 2013 is a tipping point is that you've had a whole series of pressure points from different stakeholders all coming together in one perfect storm. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I got one piece of advice from my wife. She said, don't waffle. <laughs> so we'll, we'll try and smash this into about 15 minutes if we can. Um, I want to talk to you about mega trends that are affecting tax, which I believe will in fact trans translate into what issues we'll have to attend to in the boardroom. Now for every mega trend, there is a catalyst. So we'll look at the cat catalysts and then we'll look at the mega trends and how these will flow through to the boardroom. The first of those mega trends that I want to look at is the post-global financial crisis. I think it's a multifaceted problem. Whenever an economy shrinks, then there's a need for the government to raise additional revenue. The government's got to find a way to deal with these demands that the people are placing on the economy. Then, of course, there's a change in the character of the economy. We heard some of it over there. The economy has transformed from what it was before. Uh, it's been an economy that's been an industrial economy. It's now become a, a, a digital economy. And frankly, the tax systems in the world have not kept pace. I believe it's, it's just been uh, a tax system that's been able to cope with the historic kind of 
uh, economy that we've had. And of course, what we have now is most of our balance sheet have the major asset on it, which is probably not reflected on the balance sheet, which um, is the kind of uh, asset which um, we, we look at today, um, it, it's, it's intangibles. And what, what, do, what, do, what do companies do? They, they try and place their intangibles in safe havens and they, play, they pay for those uh, intangibles um, royalties. And those, that means that those royalties are being deducted and housed somewhere else in the world. So that's the problem that we're, we're facing. What's the mega trend that we see? Obviously, it's BEPS legislation that's going to come through. And we, we, we've, we're going to find that governments are going to counter this BEPS legislation, which is profit shifting. And the biggest of those that I think is going to be concentrated on is um, transfer pricing. In Africa alone, transfer pricing probably accounts for 50 billion dollars over the last five years. I personally believe it's bigger than that, probably close to 100 billion. These are just estimates. So the weight of scrutiny will be on transfer pricing. Um, we've seen just what's been mentioned in terms of VAT regulations to deal with e-commerce and um, South Africa is probably ahead of the curve in some of the things that we've been doing uh, around the areas of section 23M and 23N. Next trend that I'd like to talk about is tax morality. Now, who would have thought uh, that tax would have been a headline 10 years ago? But right now, the man in the street has an interest in tax. Lobby groups and politicians have been influenced by corporate social responsibility groups to drive the issue of tax morality. The problem is what the law says and what people think is, should be paid is completely different things. Now we've hoped this will go away. When I've been overseas, I've seen the headlines. You can see the headlines up there. It's simply not going to go away, ladies and gentlemen, it's here to stay. You've seen, you think it might just be overseas, you've seen this article on SAB, you've seen the Media24 Google articles, Google not paying enough tax. So the mega trend really that we're seeing is spiraling disputes and ultimately the potential for litigation. SARS has got and governments have got the right to fight syndrome going. They believe they can fight and, and, and the trend that we're seeing in the boardroom is probably going to have to be addressed is the real risk of brand damage. You're going to have to protect your reputations arising from the way you deal with tax. This is going to become a big boardroom issue. I looked at this section two of the Tax Administration Act when it came out and I'll quote it to you. It says, to afford effective and efficient collection of taxes. It's not going to give all of us equal power out there. And companies are going to have to just adapt to manage their tax affairs more effectively with more complex regula regulations and a much more hostile environment. The next big issue is perceived tax avoidance. Notice I didn't say tax evasion. The whole area of tax avoidance is big. Now not less than 100 companies have signed up to participate in tax information exchange programs. They were not very much followed by all the countries in the world, but I, but I can tell you, you heard Minister Finance talking about it yesterday, it's going to be tackled far more seriously by countries in the world. I, I read about the Loch Ernie Declaration in June last year, some of you know about it, the, the G8 um, uh, spoke very much about this, and the idea is it's a 10-point plan to drive growth, but one of the big things that they said, you can read it over here, I actually can't um, quoted for you, but it's on the screen. W what it was about was full disclosure. There's none of this, yeah, we're going we're gonna to exchange information, it's a good idea, but nothing really happens. It's going to happen now. So the mega trend we're seeing is total tax transparency. Now in the past, 
it was possible, potentially, not very clever, but possible to plan affairs and hope that you would be able to get away with them because you, your tax planning was not properly, um, it was a bit obscure. In the future, it's going to be suicidal. Authorities are just going to cooperate to counter um, transactions which they don't believe are properly disclosed. The ultimate aim, and this is what I really believe is going to happen, the ultimate aim will be somewhere along with the Scandinavian countries. You guys know what the Scandinavian countries require? That they require that the holding company discloses the EFT in every other country in the world where they operate. So all the subsidiaries, EFTs, are disclosed. And that's where they're going, and that's what the Loch Ernie Declaration was saying. And if you look at that, and the Swiss banks disclose information after 100 years, believe me, this is going to come in. Next big issue is globalization. Companies obviously can exploit international markets wherever they're at, but governments are limited to where they're operating. So what are they doing? They're basically saying, we will change our policies to attract investment. So capital's flowing all over. They're going to change their policies and make what they do is it great to invest in their countries. They attract the investment into their countries, holidays, tax holidays, tax incentives, um, and they distort investment that would flow all over the world. Now, it's very common for the, them to do this. Um, the OEC doesn't like it. And so um, what happens is those with the best incentives attract the investment. By the way, that's why Volvo, for example, said to Sweden, look, it's better for us to go somewhere else on two occasions than to stay in Sweden. But it certain, certainly creates uncertainty. Now, we're not going to get harmonization of tax codes, because that's the best thing. And the OECD has been talking about how, how it would be great to have harmonization of national tax codes. But you're not going to get Sweden and Singapore and the other countries, Switzerland, to harmonize their tax codes, because that's an infringement of sovereign rights. What, what we're going to get is the requirement that if you move your operations from here to somewhere else, or from another jurisdiction, Somewhere else, what they will have to be supported by substance. So substance for everything you do in the future is going to be an absolute. And I just suggest that when we look at Africa, because the legislation in Africa is changing so much, be very careful that what you've done, what you've done, what you're going to do in the future is absolutely transparent, that you have a look at it, because the legislation there is changing so much. The information age. The authorities have an unbelievable capacity and will develop an even greater capacity to scan information anywhere in the world. If you don't believe it, just ask Snowden. Okay? It's just growing capacity. There will be no place to hide. Remember the minister even used words like this. this I'd already put this in here and the minister had used this word. And, they have an unbelievable capacity to get this information. So you'll be, all you can do is hide behind the four corners of the law, the admin law, the tax law, case law, constitutional law. That's our safe harbor at the moment. Because how can you get with the ability of the information age, how, how can you stop information being looked at with this age we're in at the moment? It'll be scanned everywhere. So the mega trend is technology, using technology to audit, using technology to find things. Um, it'll interrogate data anywhere in the world. Can you imagine programs um, to, to look with exception reporting at indirect tax returns? I used my imagination a bit here and I thought, imagine if there's a case law that affects companies in one place in the world and they say, I want to find everywhere else with similar law how I'll find the information and just go through it. And they press a button and it just pops up here, 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 this company. I'm just going to look at all these companies like this. Um, uh, categorization of transactions because it, it works here and it's going to be similar over there and I just press a button and it comes out. It's going to be phenomenal what they can do with this kind of information. I see some laughing over there. It's true. 
Unreal what they can do. So e-commerce, you can see what they're doing with that. They're going to use this. It's amazing what's going to come out of this. So I'm rushing through this stuff here, but have a look at it. corporate governance. Therefore, what, they, what, it's going to, what, what is corporate governance, what we're required to do with corporate governance at the moment, the mega trend is this. It's going to cause um, a skyrocketing of tax in the boardroom. And I want to just, I'm rushing through this, but what I want to do is I want to talk about taking tax to the boardroom. Now the first part of this is tax taking, making a tax strategy. And I unfortunately can't see all the wording over here. Um, so I might have to look a little bit here. Um, many companies don't have a clear tax strategy in the boardroom. And I want to say to you, why do you need a tax strategy in your boardroom? Well, it's, Im it's important because tax strategy is about how tax fits into the overall strategy of the company to make it successful. I sat with a client who's here today and I said, well, how much does your tax cost you? Uh, and it, it worked out to be about 15% of the turnover of that company, 15%. Every check you write to the receiver of revenue is a cost to the company. You might think, well, look, I've, I've recovered it from, uh, from the, the employees. No, no, it's your responsibility to, cover, to recover that cost. So does your company have a tax strategy that is monitored and set by, by the board? Um, the, the other point is, given all the mega trends that are coming, the tax strategy you have now has to be adapted to accommodate those, those trends. And... and if it hasn't been accommodated, then I'd recommend there is an accommodation of that tax strategy. Then we need to develop a robust policy framework. Now, I'll talk a little bit about that. And I, what is that policy framework about? Who is responsible for tax at the board level? And there has to be accountability for every incidence of tax. So someone has to be there who's account, who, who reports to the board for tax, and then there has to be accountability within the organization for every incidence of tax, international tax, corporate tax, VAT, um, customs duties, etc., etc., within the board. Um, if we look at it, the communication of the tax policy within the organization, who takes most of the decisions in the organization concerning tax? It's not taken at the higher levels, it's taken at the lower levels. So tax has to be, what is the policy? Do you have a tax policy framework? Do, is there a communication of what the tax policy is within the organization? Is there benchmarking for success of the tax practice? Is there, are there KPIs set for tax in your organization? I actually, see if it comes up here, um, I actually uh, put one from one of our clients in the UK. Uh, I don't know if you can read that. Is that capable of read? It's a bit small. Um, but they actually have a way that they measure whether this, their tax departments are successful or not. So that's very important to have. And we've got a number of KPIs that we measure, uh, we could use to assist to measure success in the tax department. Let me just press on because I know time's running. Tax risk management. Some of the things, again, that have to be addressed. Tax should be a regular feature on the boardroom agenda. What are your biggest risks? I've been to tax uh, to board meetings where the risks are measured. They set out which are going away, which are being added, but they regularly featured on the boardroom agendas. The breadth and width of experience for your different taxes. You've got to be able to know how much in the organisation the tax um, experience exists. Where does it all exist? When we did VDP, do you know there were 43 taxes that you could get a VDP, you, you could get it uh, managed under VDP, dealt with under VDP? 43. Now, obviously, not, they're not all there, but, but there's some major ones that have to be dealt with. Then you have to implement globally. One of our clients here uh, is, is actually, uh, it's here today, uh, I, I know how they manage their taxes globally. It's phenomenal. If you're not managing them, and of course many of you would be doing this, but just as was an example, it's incredibly hard to even deal with the compliance globally. 
different months, etc. So that has to be dealt with. It's not just a local matter, obviously a global matter. It's trite but important. Dispute resolution. This is going to become an incredibly important area because when SARS got a right to fight, uh, or internationally this idea of right to fight, how will you manage disputes going forward? A good settlement is much better than a great win in seven years' time. And then embracing technology. Can your systems accommodate what SARSs or the international um, authorities are looking for? Now, um, we know that gathering the information, how many of you guys here know, will, will know this already, that gathering the information just in your systems is so important. And then they begin to ask for more information. And the system is good, but it doesn't accommodate what has changed in the legislation, etc., etc. So what we have, ladies and gentlemen, is an incredibly uh, dynamic system with taxes. I can't deal in this presentation with how important this change that we see coming is. I've been in tax for 25 years plus VAT. Oh, it's been exciting. <laughs> it's been wonderful. But I don't think I've faced the kind of changes I see coming along uh, now. And I'm, I'm enthusiastic about it. And I'm sure you guys uh, look at it and say, wow, uh, th this is amazing, these changes that are coming. But my, my only recommendation to you at this stage is prepare for them. Those, the winners will be the guys that prepare for the changes and deal with the changes. Um, because tax is a major impact on business.